Well, hey there, and thanks for watching this video. We are Evangel Assembly, and welcome to Church Online. My name is Asa Prey, and we are so glad that you are tuning in with us today. If you're here, we believe it is not by accident. We believe that you can meet with God right here and right now. No matter where you are or what room in life you find yourself in, we believe God is there with you and that he wants to meet with you today. If this is your first time tuning in, we would love to get connected with you. You can log on to our website, greenwall.evangelassembly.org, to fill out the I'm New card. It's really simple and easy, just some basic information. After you fill it out, someone from the church will then get in contact with you soon. Now we're about to get started in just a few minutes, so here is a rundown for the video today. We'll start with some music, where members of our worship team will lead us in songs of honor, adoration, and connection with God. Then we'll take some time to pray together, sharing our thoughts, feelings, and needs with God. And then we'll take a brief moment where you can, if you desire, give a donation or offering to our church. After that, we'll hear a message from the Word of God that we can understand and begin to apply to our lives right away. Either our lead pastor, Pastor Brian, a staff pastor, or a guest will share the message with us today. If you are watching live with us, feel free to leave comments in the chat section on your screen. It's the best way to interact with others during the service. Moderators, pastors, and other attendees are watching with you as you participate in the service. If you'd like to know more about our church, you can visit our portal website. Go to greenwall.evangelassembly.org to get more information about us. If you want to get in contact with us, you can browse through our calendar, or you can even share a prayer request with us. Either way, this is the place to go. Check out greenwall.evangelassembly.org for all the information about our church. Feel free to participate in this service however you feel comfortable. If you're new or this video just popped up on your feed, then don't worry about it. Just sit back, relax, and watch. If you've done this before, then feel free to actively join in with us. You're welcome to sing along, to pray with us, or even grab a Bible, get some pen and paper out, and maybe take some notes. But in the end, we believe God wants to meet with you and speak to you today. And we believe that he can change your life forever. We're so glad that you were here and we hope that you were blessed by our service today. So thank you so much for watching and enjoy the service.
Church, right now at this time, we're going to take a brief moment and join together in prayer. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't quite know who you are or how you found this video, but I want you to know that whatever need you have going on in your life, whatever you want to talk to God about, He's truly listening. He's a God that hears. He's a God that saves. He's a God that cares. And I believe God wants to hear your prayer right now. So I'm going to just lead us in a brief prayer. And if you want to say your own prayer right now, wherever you are, that'd be a great moment and time to do it. But let's take this time to pray together. Amen. Father God, we thank you so much. Uh, we thank you for being a God that is always for us, that's always listening. We're, we are not talking to a dead God. We're not talking to just a history book, Lord. We are speaking to the living God. You are alive. You rose from that grave 2,000 years ago. You didn't just die, but you rose from that grave to give us new life. Lord, thank you so much that you are with us and for us in every circumstance. Lord God, I pray that you would remind us constantly that you are hearing us, that 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 we can actually speak to you and have a conversation, that it's not a one-way street or that, you're, or that you're silent. But thank you that you are with us, Lord God. I pray you remind those watching right now that very same thing. Whatever prayer they want to lift up to you, whatever they want to say to you, Lord God, may they know that you hear it. And may they feel it as well, God. I pray your presence would walk with them and shower them right now. And may they know that you are for them, God. Thank you so much. And may you lead us in the rest of our service today. In Jesus' name. Amen. We want to pray for you. If you are watching live and you have a need that you want prayer for, feel free to type it in the chat. And our moderators and other attendees will start praying with you and for you right now. You can also text the word prayer to the number on your screen. Or you can log on to the Greenwall website, greenwall.evangelassembly.org. It will take you to a private and secure form where you can fill out your prayer request. Your privacy is important to us. We don't share the information you share with us unless you request for the need to be shared. Options for sharing are listed at the bottom of the form. Once you're done, just hit submit and then we'll see it soon. But no matter how you share your request, be assured that we as a church are praying with you and for you. And be assured that God hears and listens to your needs as well. Now at this time, we want to give you the opportunity to give your tithes and offerings to the Lord. This is the part of our service where we give financially to the church as a form of worship to God. If you're not in a position to give financially today, don't worry about it at all. No payment is required to be a part of our church. We're just really glad that you're here. If you do decide to give today, know that your gift is a blessing to us and others around the world. Your faithful gift helps us to serve God, others, and our world in a variety of ways, including this broadcast. And for that, we really say thank you. If you would like to give, you can submit your offering online at the Greenwall website, or you can send us mail at the P.O. box listed on your screen. No matter how you choose to give, the Lord is honored by your faith and your gift, and we thank you for taking the time to give today. 
We're going to continue in our service, and soon we'll hear a message from the Word of God that we can apply to our lives. Thank you so much for giving, and enjoy the message. Hey, Evangel Online, thanks for tuning in to our service today. I want to give you a quick tip before we dive into the message for this morning. Now, maybe you've been watching for a while, maybe you've been a part of our online services for a good amount of time, and you want to take a next step. Maybe you want to dive into something else and feel more like a part of the church. But maybe for you, coming to the building is, is just not an option. I understand. You know, COVID's still a real issue. Maybe you live far away. Maybe you're across the country. Maybe just traveling is really difficult for you. We want to give you a simple, easy next step that you can take to find out more about what's going on here at church. You can sign up for our newsletter. It's really simple, really easy. Each At the beginning of each month, we send out an email to everybody who subscribe and they get the lowdown of what's happening here at Evangel. And if you want to know more about what's going on, you can subscribe to our newsletter. It's a really simple step. But we want to make it, we want to make it worth your while. If you subscribe to our newsletter this month, at the end of the month, when the next newsletter goes out, we're going to give away a free Amazon gift card to one lucky subscriber. That's right, if you subscribe to our newsletter this month, at the end of the month, you will you may get the chance to get a free Amazon gift card from us. Just to say thank you for being a part of our church and thank you for subscribing to the newsletter. If you're interested in that, go ahead and click this link right here and you can subscribe to what's going on here at the church. Um, or you can go ahead and find it on our website, go down to evangelassembly.org, scroll down to the bottom and click newsletter and you'll be able to get subscribed to it right away. We're glad you're here. We're glad that you're a part of our church and part of what's going on here. Thank you for being part of our online campus. We want to make sure you're plugged into what's happening. 
So without further ado, here's our message. God bless and thanks for watching. Oh, hey, <laughs> did you ever lose track of time? <laughs> when was the last time that happened to you? Put that in the chat. Like, when, when did you lose track of time? And you're like, oh my goodness. You know, uh, might be a good thing, might be a bad thing, might be a funny thing. Uh, there was one time when I was on the staff, uh, I was a staff pastor at Bethany in, in Agawam, Massachusetts, and the morning services that Sunday were particularly draining, and uh, I led the worship service for kids, for about 120 kids in the first service, and then administered all the classes that were going on of every age group in the second. So there was always that last minute fill in for a teacher or a crisis to solve every single Sunday, you know, putting out fires, and this morning was particularly challenging. So <laughs> my wife and I went home, had lunch, and I crashed, like nap time, right? But I didn't set my alarm. So I was so tired, like so exhausted that I woke up with a start. And, and I looked at the time, and um, if I realized if I didn't leave immediately, I would be late for their Sunday evening service. Yeah, those were the days when you had Sunday evening services. So I sleepily and hurriedly got dressed you know, raced into church, you know, in my car, ran into church and got to the holy hallway, as we called it in those days, you know, ready to go onto the platform uh, with the staff for the service. So I entered with the staff because we all kind of ceremoniously sat uh, on the platform. And it was only then in front of like a couple hundred people who were there that I realized that in my sleepiness, I had put on two different colored shoes. You know, one black dress shoe, one brown dress shoe. And, and here I am on a raised platform. So like people's eye level is my shoe level. So I tried to hide, you know, uh, my one shoe, the entire service by putting the other one in front of it. Don't ask me what the service was about that night because I was too busy hiding my shoes from the crowd to listen. You know, I think with COVID-19, we all have kind of woke up with a start. And we found ourselves unprepared for what we have been facing and are facing. And we kind of feel like we've been living in a bad B movie, you know, right? About a pandemic. And we realized that we have not really noticed the time that we live in. And we haven't dressed ourselves to be prepared for what we face in life. And I'm here to tell you today that it's time. Uh, that's our series title. This fall, we're going to be talking about the response to the, the wake-up call we Christians have had and should have in COVID times and uh, how we need to be dressing ourselves because it's time. Um, but before we get to how we need to dress, we need to first make sure that we notice the time, that we take the time, and that we act in time to face the moment that is right in front of us right now. So we're going to take the next couple of weeks to do that um, in the series on It's Time. And then we're going to talk about how we need to get dressed, <laughs> how we need to be ready for what's in front of us and what life is throwing at us, and how we can get dressed the right way so that we're ready for what is right in front of us. But first today, we need to notice the time. Notice the time. Um, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 18 records these words of Scripture. This is now the second letter that I'm writing to you, beloved. Uh, in both of them, I'm stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember the predictions of the holy prophets and the commandment of our Lord and Savior through your apostles, knowing this first off, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desires. They will say, where's the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. For they deliberately overlook this fact, that the heavens existed long ago, and that the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God, and that by means of these the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word, the heavens and earth that now exist are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, 
but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done in it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of uh, holiness and godliness, awaiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the earthly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. Here's the truth uh, in what we're facing right now in the world. We, you and I, we just want back to normal. You know, throughout this whole pandemic, people's cry has been, when will things get back to normal? You know, we get small tastes of normal and then things like the Delta variant come along and, and, and all of a sudden what we thought was coming as normal is not here anymore. We just want things to settle in and be like they were. But COVID-19 reminds us that things that are normal can be shattered. But I want to tell you that today that that's not a bad thing because normal can make us complacent. Look, when things are normal, we kind of settle in. We let our lives go on autopilot many times. And while that may be relaxing, um, it really doesn't move us forward. In fact, it can actually move us backward. Because when life is good, we can get comfortable in this world. And we can forget that this world is not the ultimate goal. You know, I learned this on a missions trip I took to Venezuela years ago. When we went to the poor sections of Merida, Venezuela, and we asked, Se puedo hablarse de Jesús? And, uh, and they would say, Si, sí, uh, can I talk to you about Jesus? And they would say, Yes. I thought, well, they must have misunderstood because I was kind of used to the responses I would get in America. So I would ask again, uh, Quiero hablarse de Jesús, ¿está bien? I want to talk to you about Jesus. Is that okay? And they'd say, Si. Sí. And so we went inside their homes and we started to talk to them about Jesus. And they prayed to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Um, now, they didn't have the comforts of this world. Um, and you could see looking at their homes, but they knew they needed Jesus. And it reminded me of what Jesus said when he said, blessed are the poor. Uh, and then uh, we went to the rich sections of town. And uh, the rich people heard we were coming. And we didn't even get to ask them the question because they put signs on their gates <laughs> at the front of their walkways telling us they were not interested because they were comfortable with the way things were in life. I mean, for them, life was good and normal is good. And that's the problem with normal sometimes. When it's good for us, we settle in. We don't want or expect change because we think it's working for us. And when things are good for us, we don't see how bad things really are in the world and around us or even in us. Peter talks about the fact that change needed to come. The people he was writing to um, knew that change was needed because in their day, evil was rampant. You know, where was God in all of this? And when Peter writes this epistle, he warns his readers not to be put off by those who wrongly argue that God's seeming inactivity means that he's not going to act. Um, the unbeliever's argument was, hey, look, things don't change. They've been this way for a long time, and so it's not going to change. Um, this is the way life is. Settle in. You know, this is how it's going to be. In actual fact, the scoffer's argument in verse 4 that we read earlier is false because they've conveniently forgotten that God did intervene in the past in judgment and time of the flood that Peter talks about. And this proves that the, the, the stability of time and events, that's no argument, that God will interrupt that rhythm, that he can carry out his own promises and his own activity in his time. Look, you and I may want to get back to normal because, well, for us, maybe normal worked. 
But I want to challenge you to let the abnormal of COVID wake you up a little bit to see that all is not well in paradise. See, COVID-19 has revealed several things. Did, did you happen to notice um, that about one third of practicing Christians in America stopped going to church in any form, including online during COVID? That kind of begs the question, <clears throat> how strong was their faith to start with? Um, not surprisingly, those who have stopped attending church during COVID-19 are less likely than their peers who are still attending church during the pandemic to agree with this statement. This is according to surveying. I am not anxious about my life as I have an inner peace with God. <laughs> they, they can't say that. They're also three times more likely than all practicing Christians to say that they feel bored all of the time. They're twice as likely to say that they have felt insecure for at least some portion of every day. Um, and did you notice also in all of the COVID times, the pain of racial inequities that were expressed in our nation? Did you notice the imbalance in our world during this time where rich countries have access to the vaccine and debates as to whether a third shot should be offered to those people when people in poor countries can't even get one? Did you notice the division and polarization within our own nation? Uh, have you noticed the statement to before, uh, united we stand, divided we fall? Well, we're falling. Have you noticed the immaturity and the selfishness of people in these times of tension? Um, one of the striking things to me in this whole COVID time was, where is the church? Where are Christians in this crisis? Look, let's admit something, huh? Normal was not the paradise we thought it was. Look, we want to get back to normal because maybe it was working for us, we think. But the truth is, God wants a new, higher normal. Um, in verse 10 of the passage we read, it, it says this, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Verse 13, but according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. You know, we want normal. We really do. God wants a new normal. And God uses the events of the day to shake us up and to call us to a deeper reality. Look, the truth is you and I can get lost in this present world when things go well for us when life is good for us. And we can forget that this present state is not what God is working toward. Sometimes we act as if that's kind of God's job. God's job, you know, we think is to keep things stable the way we like it. And we cry, why God, when our stable normal is interrupted? And we forget that God wants a new, higher normal. And look, that's true in our world, and that's true in our individual lives in our world because, come on, man, our world is broken. For all the reasons I listed above that COVID has uncovered, just look at the headlines. Uh, look at what's happening in the world. Look, our world is broken, and Jesus is coming to bring justice and righteousness to the earth, and he's the only one who can. He's coming to right the wrongs, to expose what must be exposed, and we need that. That's actually our hope. <laughs> That, that there will be a new, higher normal for our world when Jesus reigns on this earth. And, and that will happen. Have we lost sight of that because we're too comfortable in however we're living today? Look, it's, it's one of the reasons for what I listed above. Um, and add to that what's happening in nature all around us as a sign that this present world is not the goal. I mean, have you seen what's happening in nature? Um, look, Jesus said this to his disciples when asked about the end of all things in Matthew 24. He said in verse 6, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of birth pains. He's talking about the beginning of the end. Um, all of this reminds us of a truth that we need to hear here in our lives. And Peter tells us, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. 
and then the heavens will pass away with a roar and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Look, this world will not last. Um, when this is world is where we put our hope, then the truth is our hope will not last. When this world is where we build our treasure, our treasure will not last. Our present world as we know it and as we live in it has an expiration date. You know, one of the lies of Satan, remember that last series we did, is to get you to think like the scoffers that Peter refers to, that things will just keep going as they always have been. Because when you think that way, then you'll act in accordance with that thought. Um, and one day, <laughs> like that day I was on Bethany's platform, you'll be embarrassed that you were not ready because you didn't know what time it was. But when you realize that all that is around us won't last, it starts to affect how you think and how you act. In fact, did you notice Peter's next words? But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and all the works done in it will be exposed. Then he says this, Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, awaiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found in him without spot or blemish and at peace. Look, if this present world system is working for you, then you are a little unsettled by what Peter just said in the Bible. Because the truth is, you like the status quo. But you need to wake up. Because God is coming to shake up the status quo. You need to make Jesus the king of your life and not the things and comforts of this world. And look, we as Christians, we need to get serious about our faith. Now, we may say, hey, I prayed a prayer to accept Jesus. We may say, I believe in Jesus, and to which I say, that's awesome. But is he the king of your life today? Not just your savior and helper, but your king. Look, kings are not just to be believed, but they are to be followed and obeyed. Now, we're going to talk more about that in this series, but I believe God is calling us to hear these words of Peter today. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God? Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found in him without spot or blemish and at peace. Look, notice these last two words. Did you notice that? At peace. At peace because we know what time it is and we are rightly clothed in Jesus. At peace because our hope is solidly placed in that which will, will last, not something that can be lost like in this present world. Have we learned that in COVID? What you think is reliable and dependable in this world that you can build your life on is actually sinking sand. There's only one thing that will remain, what we have invested with Jesus. Look, it's time. And I honestly believe God is using COVID-19 to remind us what time it is. I want you to listen to these words of Chip Ingram. What if in an act of severe mercy, our Heavenly Father is taking what is meant for evil and using it for good? Like a good parent, he's pushed us in time out. <laughs> Far from punitive, his desire is to help us take stock, to pause, to reflect on our lives, our relationships, our idols, and return to him for the life that truly is life. One by one, he has revealed the false gods in whom we have trusted. Our faith in the God of money to provide power, control, and security has betrayed us. 
our faith in the God of hedonism that promised personal fulfillment through the next amazing experience at that trendy restaurant or the hottest concert or sporting event or exotic location or the never-ending cycle of weekend escapes and partying with friends. They have all come to a screeching halt. And last, but far from least, our faith in the God of self that seeks to prove our value and significance through our work, our talent, our looks, our latest accomplishments, all neatly curated on our look at me, Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn posts. It's been put on hold for most of us during this crisis. We sit at home and we have no choice but to face ourselves for who we really are, minus the props of work and hobbies and busyness that kept our consciences distracted from pondering the deeper issues of life, purpose, meaning, love, God, and our response to his great mercy and generous offer of real life both now and forever with him. I think in our personal lives and in our corporate experience, there are very specific windows of time when we have the opportunity to see life more clearly than ever before. Death and crisis have a way of pushing the really important things to the forefront for our attention. Solomon said that there's more wisdom in the house of mourning than in the house of feasting. Apostle Paul, writing to a blatantly corrupt and immoral society in Ephesus, pleaded with them to awake sleeper and rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Many followers of Christ have prayed for many years that God would cause a great move of his spirit to happen in the world, that God would awaken the whole world to the greatness of his love and the certainty of his return and his coming judgment. In like manner, many of us have prayed that his church would be awakened to our duplicity, our hypocrisy, our hardness of heart, our own immorality, our judgmental attitude, and most importantly, the loss of our first love. Could this crisis and tragedy and COVID-19 be our chance? Could this be the mercy of God pleading and warning us, his wayward children, to stop being conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we might test and experience what the will of God is, that which is good and well-pleasing and perfect? Can you imagine the impact if millions and millions of us followers in, of Christ in America would respond to this pandemic by forsaking our religiosity, our prejudice, our idols, and return to our first love, Jesus, with wholehearted devotion and unswerving obedience to his word. Can you imagine the millions of acts of service happening each and every day in the workplace and in marriages and in homes as unbelievers witnessed and experienced authentic love and observed the lives of integrity of those who claimed to follow Jesus and lived it out in their life? Can you imagine the social transformation as billions of dollars are released to meet the needs in local communities and supporting the poor and marginalized across the nations and the world because believers gave their first and best of their finances to Jesus as an act of worship and love, not duty, not obligation, or believing it'll make them rich in the end? Could it happen? Can it happen? Of course it can because it's happened before. And it's happened in various windows throughout history. And most often it's happened in times of crisis. Will it happen? I say only you and I can decide that. Hey, let's do this together. It's time. So let's first notice the time. Let's look around us, look at our world, look at our nation, look at everything that's happening, and let's realize it's time. It's time to get serious about loving Jesus first and putting his kingdom first in our life. You know, if we can help you do that, maybe for the first time to move past religion and into relationship with God, we would love to do that. 
Um, you can text the word believe to 340-5529, 340-5529, and we would help you to make that step with Christ and, and to know him in a real personal way. For the rest of us, you're going to be hearing me talking about groups that we're going to be offering called um, Learning to Live and Love Like Jesus. It's really taking us back to, to being like him and loving God first and loving others. Those two things that, that Jesus said were the most important things. And we're going to talk about how to do that authentically in those groups. Not religion, but relationship. And we'll hope you'll sign up for those. In fact, if you, you know click on the newsletter little piece that you could get that. All the information is there. There's even Bible reading plans in that newsletter that you can join us in getting into the Bible on a version app and follow, continue the conversation of what we're talking about today and each week in September as that plan will give you a few verses, a devotional thought, and you can chat with others. Look, it's time. It's time. Will you notice the time? And will you take the step you need to take in this moment to connect to God in the way you need to. God bless you guys, and thanks for watching. Thank you for tuning in today. We hope that you are a little bit closer to God than when you started watching. If you want to know more about us or get connected to our church, just log on to the Green Wall website. If you are new and this service blessed you, let us know by filling out the I'm New card listed on the website, and we'll get back to you soon. If you are a regular attendee and would like to get in touch, just fill out the contact us card, give us your name and information, and we'll get connected with you soon. And thank you so much for being here, and let's take the time to close in a word of prayer. Father God, I thank you for each person that's watching, Lord. I thank you that this video found them online. I thank you that they had a chance to, to hear and watch and see. Lord God, I pray that they will remember and know that you were always with them and for them. I pray they will feel a sense of your love and your hope and your joy right now in this moment. No matter what's going on in their life, Lord God, you are with them always. I pray that they will see that and know that and feel that throughout the rest of their week. May you lead them and guide them and bless them. And may they begin today to put a little bit more trust in you. Thank you for this opportunity. May you bless those that are watching, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And thank you so much for being here with us today. If you really enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit like, hit the thumbs up button, or go ahead and subscribe so we can keep giving you these videos. We're glad that you've been here with us today. Thank you so much. Hope to see you soon. God bless you and have a great day.